These teenagers have managed to sneak into the mysterious Area 51 to look at the alien secrets it hides, but they are about to wish they didn't. Several people being interviewed talk about three young men named Reed, Darren, and Ben, who mysteriously disappeared three months ago. Most people describe them as regular guys who wouldn't be caught in anything strange. Reed's sister talks about how he was a regular guy who was good at his job and sports, but then, three months before disappearing, he suddenly became obsessed with UFOs and alien conspiracy theories. Reed's former boss says the same thing about him. Darren's brother says nobody is telling them anything about how, where, and when these boys disappeared, and something is up. One man talks about the fact that if somebody tried to get footage of Area 51, as these three boys were suspected of trying to do, they would be in serious trouble. Jump back to six months ago, Reed, Darren, and Ben are headed toward a party and planning how they are going to get laid tonight. Darren is recording the whole thing on a portable camera. They arrive at the party and have a good time doing shots, playing beer pong and jumping into pools butt naked. Reed steps up to sing karaoke, and during his performance, the power suddenly goes out. When the power returns, Reed is nowhere to be found. They all simply think that he chickened out of singing and continue their party activities. During the party, the other two boys suspect that they see Reed in the woods nearby, but they think nothing of it. They simply assume that he is with a girl doing something naughty. However, as the party progresses, they realize that Reed is nowhere to be found. They assume that he left early and decide to leave themselves. As they are driving down the dark road, Darren suddenly slams the brakes, and it is revealed that Reed has appeared in front of the car out of nowhere. Darren steps out to check on Reed, who has a rather blank expression on his face. They ask Reed if he is okay, and he replies that he is, but something is clearly wrong. Three months later, the three boys are getting ready to take off on a mission to break into Area 51. Darren and Reed have prepared extensively for it. Meanwhile, Ben thinks they are being crazy and is only going along as the driver. He thinks that this is all just a joke, and when they realize how impossible this is, they will back off. Ben shows them footage of how the American military uses thermal cameras to detect people in the dark, in order to give them an idea of what they are walking into. However, Reed replies that he has figured out a solution to this. Next, Reed tests out a signal jammer that he has purchased by blocking the signals on Ben's phone while he tries to talk to his girlfriend. Darren and Reed are also taking pills that lower the levels of ammonia inside their bodies because they have read that there are ammonia sensors outside of Area 51 to detect organic presence. The three men load all the equipment that they have prepared for the break-in during the last three months into the car and head toward Los Angeles. On the way to L.A., Ben continues to criticize the plan and tells them that they are going to get shot by the military. Reed tries to argue that he has read up on all the security measures around the base, and he has a plan to get around all of them. Ben says that Reed has obviously been a little crazy since that night they went to the party, but he doesn't understand why Darren is signing up for this. Darren replies that no one has ever seen footage of Area 51, so if they become the first people to ever film it, it would be the biggest accomplishment ever. Reed talks to a girl named Jelena on the phone, whose father supposedly worked in Area 51 and wrote a book about it after getting fired. Ben says that just because someone wrote a book about it does not mean that they are telling the truth. He also points out that Jelena's father killed himself after writing the book, so he was obviously not very stable. Reed says that he has figured out how to get on the base, but he doesn't know what to do once he's there, and for that, they need the information that Jelena's father had. Hence, they're going to meet her tomorrow. Next, the boys spend their day sneaking their wearable cameras into the private rooms of strip clubs to see if they are easily detectable or not. The next morning, they go to meet Yelena, and she tells them to follow her to a storage facility. Yelena reveals that her dad got fired from Area 51 for asking too many questions. She tells them that near the end of his life, he got really paranoid and kept talking about their phones being tapped and people following him around. He told Jelena that if something were to happen to him, she should take all his stuff and bring it to a storage facility, somewhere that the government wouldn't get their hands on it. Yelena reveals that exactly 24 hours after his death, their house got raided, but by that time, 
she had already brought all his stuff to this storage locker. Jelena's dad's stuff contains records of Area 51 employees and maps that he drew of the entire base from memory. Jelena reveals that the above-ground buildings are just a front. The real base is underground, at a level called S4. Her dad did not have S4 clearance, so he followed a guy there who did, to get a look at it. She gives them all the information she has on the S4 clearance guy. Ben expresses concern that if this is all true, then it is what got Yelena's dad killed, and that's what they are risking. Next, the trio tracks the S4 clearance man and figures out the location of his house. They wait for the man to leave, and when he does, Reed and Darren break into his house, despite Ben strongly protesting against this idea. Reed and Darren look for the man's access card, but the man and his family return, leaving the two boys no choice but to find hiding spots and wait until the family has fallen asleep. Afterward, they grab the man's access card and his cologne bottle to get his fingerprint and leave. Ben is outraged at the lengths that Darren and Reed are willing to go for this. The next morning, they arrive at the desert where the base is, and Ben asks Darren to try and talk Reed out of this, but Darren doesn't agree. He asks Ben why he came along if he doesn't like this, and Ben replies that he didn't think they would actually go through with this. Next, the trio gets a hotel room and decides to speak to some of the locals. The locals tell all sorts of stories about the aliens. They say that the aliens are scary and creepy and not cute little green men as the media portrays them to be. One man says that the aliens have white blood, while another says that people can feel their presence. People get migraines and nosebleeds when they are around. Another man says that the aliens take people to another dimension where everything is all white. Where one can't tell where the floor ends and the walls begin, it's just all white. One man says that after all the things humans have done to aliens in Area 51, such as dissection and experimentation, the aliens will be very angry if they ever get out. Next, a man named Glenn shows the guys the motion detectors that are present in the ground outside the base, which can only be found with a frequency detector. Reed is confident that his signal jammer can fool these detectors. The trio returns home and finds Yelena in their hotel room. She insists on coming with them on the mission because she needs to do this for her father. They're initially hesitant, but eventually they agree. They show her how they are planning to fool the heat-sensing thermal cameras by using suits that they are pumping cold Freon through. At the last minute, Ben says if he is going to drive them, he needs to hear a really good reason for why they are doing this. Ben says that all he knows is Reed saw something weird at that party and nothing else. Reed says that he saw flashes of something really strange when he disappeared at the party, and when he woke up, a lot of time had passed in seconds. Hours of his life were missing. He adds that he doesn't fully know why he is doing this either, but something in that base is pulling him in. Ben drives Reed, Darren, and Yelena to the base and drops them off. He agrees to wait for them outside. They put on the Freon suits and start heading toward the base. They encounter an electric fence, a standard helicopter check, and a rattlesnake, but beat all the odds and make it to the base. At the base, the trio sneaks past security guards, and after several close calls, they find a way to get inside. Once inside, they use the access card and the fingerprint of the man with the S4 clearance to open the doors. They use the map drawn by Jelena's father to find the staircase that will take them down to the S4 level. While heading down, they come across a locker room where they find the radio of one of the guards. They hear screams coming out of the radio, and at that same moment, Reed's nose starts bleeding. They decide to keep moving downstairs and finally reach 40 levels beneath the ground. They hide and watch an employee enter a lab by typing in a security code. Darren comes up with the idea that they can figure out the code by looking at the keypad through thermal vision. The last button pressed will be the warmest and the first one the coldest, and hence they can deduce the order. It works, and they enter the lab. Inside the lab, they finally find the hard evidence they came to find. They see a container full of white fluid, which Darren assumes is the white blood they heard about from the locals earlier. They also spot the sample of an anti-gravity material. Jelena touches the container of the white blood, and the blood responds. The white blood launches itself toward Jelena, but is stopped by the container. The anti-gravity material also launches out and breaks its container. 
Realizing that all this noise will attract attention, the three decide to leave this room. Next, they find a kind of hangar where they spot an alien spaceship. The spaceship is made of a smooth material that shapeshifts when touched. However, it only seems to do that when Reed touches it. Reed finds an opening into the spaceship and enters, but as he does, the doorway just disappears. Jelena and Darren start panicking a little. Inside, Reed sees that there are no controls. The entire ship is smooth. He spots what appears to be a sleeping pod. Then, he spots a chair, and as he sits on it, the entire ship becomes transparent. However, he can hear and see what is going outside, but the people outside cannot see or hear him. Reed steps out, and Darren and Yelena say that they have enough footage and they should go back now, but Reed says that they haven't reached level S4 yet. He says they've come this far, they might as well go all the way. They keep going downstairs and finally arrive at S4. To enter S4, one person needs to hold the fingerprint in place for another to pass through the security gates. Darren offers to hold it in place while Jelena and Reed go in. Just then, alarms start going off, all over the place. Jelena and Reed decide to keep going further downstairs, and Darren decides to make a run for it, as security personnel arrive to arrest him. Around this moment, they all start realizing that they probably should have listened to Ben, Jelena, and Reed arrive at a level where they spot aliens, but realize that these are just alien suits. Reed deduces that perhaps these are the spacesuits that aliens wear, like astronauts do. A door opens, and behind it are rocky tunnels. They walk deep into the tunnels and start coming across people's belongings such as glasses, watches, shoes, clothes, and even children's toys. They find a room with some kind of operation table in the middle and notice that there is fresh blood on it, along with organs in containers. Jelena starts freaking out and says she wants to go back, so they start looking for a way out. They come across a room where there are dozens of the same sleeping pods that Reed saw in the spaceship. Suddenly, something or someone gets up in one of the pods and Reed and Yelena make a run for it. As they panic and run, they notice that the being is following them and it has followed them beyond the security gates. To save themselves, Jelena and Reed enter a large hatch that they find in a dark room. The hatch leads into a tunnel. Meanwhile, Darren, who is trying to sneak outside without being spotted by security, comes across one of the alien beings that have escaped. He makes a run for it as the alien devours one of the security guards right in front of him. Darren hides in a cafeteria, where unbeknownst to him, the alien is standing right above the table that he is hiding under. He gets up and makes a run for it. He reaches an elevator and presses the button to go up while the alien bangs on the door, almost breaking it. Meanwhile, Reed and Yelena hear strange noises as they are going through the tunnel, and suddenly the tunnel disappears and they fall into an all-white room. They get up and see weird skins hanging all over the place. Jelena is completely freaking out. Reed notices that strange symbols are flashing all around. He puts down the camera to look at the symbols, and unbeknownst to him, Yelena just floats away. He turns around and sees that she is gone and starts panicking. He screams her name and looks for her in every direction possible. Finally, he spots her but sees that she has a rather blank expression on her face and she is completely unresponsive to him. Suddenly, Reed's camera floats out of his hand and he and Yelena both start floating out of control. The camera goes through some sort of tunnel, and the last thing it records before falling to the ground is a spaceship flying off into the sky. On the other hand, Darren manages to get to the ground level, and he sees that all the personnel in the entire base are being evacuated. He rushes out with the herd of people. He manages to make it back to Ben in the car, and tells him all about what happened. Shocked, the two are driving away, when suddenly, Ben's car stops, and they see a bright light in the sky. Darren gets lifted toward it, and then the car is flipped to the side, and Ben is sucked out of it as well. Sometime later, an old man arrives and finds Reed's camera that fell in the desert. The End Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.